Okay, now we've got our DC installed. Now we have to actually create the domain itself. We've got a couple things to do first. We've got to set the IP address, we've got to rename the box, and we've got to set the admin password, then we can do it. So let's go ahead and take care of these little prereqs first, and then we'll get rolling. So I suppose there's nothing to it, but to let's, uh, do the, uh, let's do the admin password first. So first let's go up here and go to full screen so we don't have to do so much scrolling. This right here, I'm gonna unpin that for a second so I can see the whole screen. Now I'm gonna to go to tools, computer management, local users and computers, I'll go to users, administrator, I'm gonna right click and set the password, proceed. There we go. Good, got that taken care of. Now let's go ahead and rename the box. Well, since we're gonna to have to reboot anyway, let's, let's take care of the IP address first. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click down here on this little icon. You can see that right there. Go to network and sharing, change network adapters, right click on the network adapter and go to properties, go to IP4. So you see here it's set up to a, to a dynamic IP address. What we want is a static IP. But the question is what range do we give our static IP, right? Well, if you remember, we had that info over here in the virtual network editor. I'll get it to come up here in a second. This host only, the VMNet one, that's the one that we're gonna want. So our range is gonna be 192, 168, 195, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? Whatever we need. So let's cancel out of that and let's use the following IP address. It's gonna be 192, 168, 195. And since this is the first one, let's call it one you can hit the tab and it'll fill in the subnet mask for you automatically. Let's go to the default gateway, 192.168.195.1. We're gonna make it its own default gateway and it's gonna be its own DNS server. 195.1. So right now we don't have DNS installed yet, but that's gonna get installed when we install AD. So let's tell that okay. Close out of here, close out of there. Now we need to go ahead and rename the box. We could leave it as this lovely little name that Windows gave it, but let's give it a real name. And since I'm feeling creative today, let's call it DC. We can't put it in a domain yet because we haven't created the domain. That's gonna take just a few seconds, there we go. That's going to want us to restart. Sure, let's go ahead and restart. It should only take a few seconds to restart. There we go, and we're done. Now we need to go ahead and install AD. In order to, oh, here comes the server manager. So in order to do that, we have to start with the server manager. Wait for it to finish coming up here. There we go. I'm going to go to local server. I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to roles and features, go to tasks, add roles and features, click next, yes, role based, yes, yes. This is what I want, I want features. So actually, sorry, I wanted roles, here we are. So Active Directory Domain Services. That's what I want right there. It's gonna add some extra stuff in there. Go ahead and tell it to add all the features that it needs. Tell it next, next, next. This is the big easy, right? It says restart the destination if server automatically required. Oh, let's go ahead and do this. That's gonna take a few seconds, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so one thing that you're gonna notice about Windows 2012 is how subtle it is. Remember we used to have a really nice green bar that goes across there to let us know that everything went okay? Well, that's kind of gone, right? So all we have now is a simple little thing that says installation succeeded on DC. The first couple times I ever did something in Windows uh, 2012, I always just let it sit there forever and ever and ever because it always looked like that last little bit was finishing up there. It never comes along here and has that green 100% or succeeded or something. It's always very subtle. So be aware of that, right? You have to really watch what's going on. 
Okay, so now it's time to actually install AD. And they make it really easy right here. Promote this server to a domain controller. Absolutely, that's what we want to do. Do we want to add this to an existing domain? No, we want to add a new forest. And right here, we're going to put uh, ps.sql. Oops, I'd rather have that like this. ps.sql, that's going to be for pluralsite.sql. I told you I'm feeling creative tonight. We'll go next. That's going to take a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and pause and come back when it's done. Okay, so we have our domain controller options here. What you're really concerned with is the functional level of your forest. And what that means is whether or not all of the all of the servers that you intend to put in here are going to be at the, the server 2012 R2 level or not. If not, then you can pick a lower level that will make AD compatible with those lower level servers. But since we're only going to do a, a small domain here that's going to be closed, we, we're just fine with the R2. So I need to set the uh, DSRM password. I'm going to make it my domain password because it doesn't really matter. Oh, that's not going to match. Because this is such a closed system, it doesn't really matter. There we go, that should be better. Next. Yeah, that's fine. Here it's gonna show you the NetBIOS name for the domain, which is PS, that's gonna be perfectly fine. You're gonna accept the defaults on most of these. Okay, this is an interesting screen. As a matter of fact, I think this is the most interesting screen of the entire wizard. Simply because and let me move that mouse out of the way, simply because it shows us what a domain really is. I ask this question in interviews all the time. I say, what is a domain? And it's funny how hard it is to define something so simple, but a domain is really a database. And we've proven it right here. We've got a database folder, we've got a log files folder, and they can be on separate drives. And in fact, I've been involved in benchmarking Active Directory scenarios where we were getting horrible performance until we split the data and log files, just like we have to do in SQL. So when you join a domain, all you're really doing is giving your computer membership in the AD database the same as all the others. It's the same as having a user inside of a SQL database, except here the, the objects are different, right? But it still makes AD a database, which means we automatically know a lot more about AD than we did when we started, right? So for right now, I'm gonna keep these the same, but if this were a real production environment where I were expecting like hundreds of users, I would definitely cover my basics of databases and split my data and logs. Click next, sure. Okay, so this is just gonna go through the prerequisite check. It should come up with a couple warnings that we're not really concerned with, but it should pass. Looks like this is gonna take a few seconds, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, here we are. You can see that now it gives us the green checkbox and they all pass successfully. So we're gonna go ahead and tell it to install AD. Again, that's probably gonna take a couple minutes, so I'll pause and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, you see here it says that we're about to be signed out. That's fine. I'll close that and it's restarting, perfect. So now, this is actually gonna take a couple minutes the first time it restarts. The last time we got a reboot in about, what, 10 seconds, give or take? This time it's probably gonna take two or three minutes because it's gotta set up all the first time AD stuff. So I'm definitely gonna pause it this time and I'll be back as soon as we get desktop. Okay, now we have desktop. That took about three minutes, give or take. And we have a fully functioning domain. We'll check here and see that the local server should have ps.sql right there. The name is DC. If we come up here to tools, now we have all of our AD stuff. Let's go to users and computers. And you can see in here that we have all of our objects, all the users and groups that get built in, that get built in with the domain. There are no computers built in yet because we've only got one computer and it's the domain controller. So there you go. We have a functioning domain. There's nothing in here yet, but next we're going to go build our other two cluster nodes and add them to the domain. So let's get started.